Okay, tonight we're going to talk about uh, calling stored procedures in the execute SQL task with parameters. Uh, I was actually sharking the MSDN forums the other day, and I came across someone who said that they uh, they, they were asking advice on how to how to pass parameters to stored procedures. So I thought I'd make this quick video. Um, it's a little late for him, but you know, somebody will get some good use out of this, right? Okay, so what I've got here is I've got a standard connection down here, and then I've got a standard uh, execute SQL statement, and I've written a couple really really simple SPs. Uh, the first one, actually SP1, looks just like this. That's all it is. It takes a parameter and then it selects that parameter as the parameter name. It's actually really easy. I mean, I'm not, I'm not looking to uh, put in a bunch of logic here. I'm just showing you an example, right? So inside my execute SQL task, of course, I make sure that I set the connection to the, to the current connection down here that I have. Now, I'm going to assume here that you already know the basics of working with the execute SQL task. Um, you know, here we're just going to work on passing parameters into stored procedures. So, you know, there there's going to be another video soon on on you know the the basics of working with the task and the details involved in that. But right now, you know, let's I'm going to assume you know all that and all you need to and all you need to do is pass a parameter, a stored procedure, and go on about your business. So, to that end, what I'm going to do is I need to call the SP. Right? Well, I do it here. There we go. So that was SP1, and any parameter you pass in is going to be a question mark, and that's the standard. Even if this were a uh, a freestanding SQL statement, right? I mean, because this could be. I mean, it could be select star from customers where customer ID equals question mark and city equals question mark. Right? I mean, that's how you do that, and you just keep tacking on those question marks. But for right now, we're going to say SP1 question mark because, because this stored procedure only has a single parameter. If you go back here and take a look at it, it's only passing in this one parameter right here. So that's the only thing I'm passing in right there. <clears throat> And on top of that, I see this uh, this parameter mapping tab. I need to go in there. First of all, I need to get rid of this one because that's for the next example. And I set this up as uh, user P1. Uh, that's the that's the namespace that this is in. It's uh, just going to give it a long data type because that's just a numeric data type. The direction here is important. Input, that's important and the parameter name is important. Now, here the parameter size isn't really that important. Um, it can be, that's more for uh, that's more for strings, right? But uh, the parameter name here is very important, and we'll actually talk about that here in a couple minutes. Now since I've got a result set, then uh, I've got another one that I call the re return val, and uh, I named it P1. And that's actually what it's going to look for when you when you pull back the result set um, that that single value over here, it's actually going to look for P1 in the result set. So you notice how I said as P1. If I didn't put that there, this would fail. So I go ahead and with any luck, let me save this. With any luck, I haven't done anything stupid and it'll run just fine. There we go, and it ran just fine. So I passed the parameter, I brought it up, and uh, you know I, I'm sure I could get the I'm sure I could uh, get my return val here somewhere but you know it ran so I'm sure you believe me um, <clears throat> now to that end let's go ahead and mess this up a little bit and see what it's gonna take to break this guy it's actually not gonna take much if I come here and name this P1 save that it should fail yes it failed and it failed because the parameter name is unrecognized, okay? And what that really means is that when it's here in the parameters, it's looking for ordinal values, right? This is a zero-based index, and so it's looking for the parameter name to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, right? So it's a zero-based index, and you have to, to, to name the parameter. Here again, this is parameter name. You have to name the parameter 
the, uh, the index value of the current index. So start with zero and you'll be good. Now, like I said, the same thing goes for the result set here. Um, if I name this result, um, let's say, uh, oh, let's call it result set, right? Then this should fail too because it's looking for P1 in there. There you go. And I'll stop that. And here's my execution result over here. And error code while processing the value to variable retval. Unable to find the column result set in the result set. So it's looking for that as the column name that it's, that it's returning. So again, result set. If I call this P1, as again, as is mentioned right here, save that, then it'll run. And the same thing goes when you have multiple parameters. So I just come in here and say comma, question mark. Now I just need to add another input variable, right? And these things are going to go in order. Uh, I don't think I made that clear. Uh, when I just said that, but it's an input variable too, and this one needs to be named what? That's right, one. <clears throat> Same result set because from uh, SP1 to SP2, I haven't really changed anything. So what I mean by this, these need to go in order is the order of ordinals here is the same order that they'll be in here. So this couldn't be, this couldn't be number two and then number one. They have to go in order one, two, in the exact same order that these guys are going in one, two. Okay? So now when I do this, unless I've done something stupid, this should run. Ah, see, I've done something stupid. What did I do? Uh, oh, I didn't change the SP name. There you go. See, I always do something stupid, don't I? There we go. So I have too many parameters for this SP. SP1 only has one parameter. There we go. Save that. Stop that. Save. And go. This will run. There we go, and that one ran. And there you go. That's how you call an SP or, um, or any query with parameters.